It's time to make a rosette, so I'm cutting some maple veneer for the mosaic inlay. It's about half a millimeter or 21 thousandths of an inch thick. Best of it's plain maple and not figured because the uh, curly stuff is hard to scrape later on when it comes time to size it. You could come up with a fancy cutting jig to do this work, but I find it's fastest just to eyeball it and do it freehand because there's so many of them to do. And they're about two and a half millimeters wide by 12 inches long. The spaghetti tastes funny. So it's going into the pot there with some standard issue fabric dye where it's going to simmer for a couple of hours. Uh, it takes longer than you'd imagine to get full penetration. Sometimes I'll pull a strip out and I will cut into it after drying it out with a hair dryer just to see how it goes. But usually about two and a half, three hours or so. So after the strips have dried and I've straightened them a little bit, it's time to glue them up. I use standard woodworking glue for this. I don't thin it very much because otherwise uh, the bond can be too weak and you'll end up with the uh, strips separating later on or even the tiles and that's very annoying when you're trying to work with them um, because you invest a lot of time. Get a lot of glue on all of the strips, thorough coverage over everything, including your own fingers. Then I get the whole row of the pattern together and in the right order. A little spray of water here on the laminate covered board keeps things from sticking too much. And then I just use finger pressure to hold it up against. These are aluminum flat stock bars that I use to keep them aligned. A little bit of water on that too. And that's all the clamping it needs. I find that um, if you try to clamp them with mechanical means, sometimes it's really hard to get the, the pressure even and you end up with alignment issues. When the strips have dried, I'll scrape them to their final size, which is about 20 thousandths of an inch thick, using my Stanley number no. 90 bullnose plane. It's an old plane that uh, I've clamped to this right angle block that uh, allows me to advance the depth of cut very carefully and smoothly. When the rows are all scraped to thickness and in their correct orientation, they're ready to glue up. And I use a little aluminum uh, right angle jig for that. I just leave the whole assembly in there for about an hour, at which point the glue is set up enough that I can stick a palette knife in and it comes out just fine. I'll let them dry for about a day, at least, and then I can cut the tiles free using uh, my little right angle sawing jig here. The individual tiles themselves are about two millimeters or maybe just a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch thick. And there we have the pattern. I like to use this homemade compass cutter to define the margins of the recess. It leaves things nice and crisp. And without it, the router can sometimes tear up fibers around the edge especially on uh, woods like western red cedar or this is Engelmann spruce. So the router is basically used just to hog out the material between the defined margins. I'll just use a uh, chisel here to trim off the little bit of excess that remains. You can see at this point that the black bordering lines are just held in place with thumbtacks. They're not actually glued in yet. And each of the individual tiles has to have a couple of chisel cuts to make it into a bit of a wedge shape so it butts up against its neighbors. I put glue on those and uh, put them in place. Eventually the entire pattern is going to be uh, covered over with thinned glue. And that gets in there, it swells up everything, and it really locks all of the individual tiles to each other and into the rebate. I use a block plane um, to get rid of most of the waste and then I finish up with a steel card scraper here so we can get a look at the final pattern. Thanks for watching.